Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to compare the Eero 6 to the Eero Pro 6. These are both Wi-Fi 6 routers or wireless AX. They both have gigabit Ethernet and they are both made by Amazon. Amazon owns Eero. I actually have individual reviews for each one of these and I'll put links in the description below so be sure to check those out. So they both use the same exact app which is the Eero app and it's pretty easy to use and it's pretty stable. So starting off with the Eero 6, this is rated for 1500 square feet or 139 square meters of coverage where the Eero Pro 6 expands that to 2000 square feet or 186 square meters of coverage. So Eero recommends this Eero 6 for internet speeds of up to 900 megabits per second where they recommend this for gigabit internet speeds. So this is a dual band router and this is a tri band router. To simplify things, basically you're not going to notice much of a speed difference between the two unless you have a lot of devices. Once you have a lot of devices then the tri band doesn't slow down as much as this. Quick reason why is routers typically have a 2.4 GHz frequency and a 5 GHz frequency and that's why it's called a dual band. This one actually has two 5 GHz frequencies and a 2.4 so that's why it has three different brands that's why it's called a tri-band router and so when you hook up devices and the more you have they basically the speed halves every time but because this one has two 5 gigahertz frequencies it takes a lot longer for this to slow down as much as this essentially so therefore when you have a lot of devices tri-band usually wins dual band in terms of speeds uh, in terms of it won't slow down Okay, so they both have two Ethernet ports. They're both auto sensing, meaning you can either hook up this side to the modem or this side, it doesn't matter. The router will pick it up, same exact thing for this. And they're both powered by USB-C. This does take a little more power. Um, speed rating, this is AX1800, this is AX4200. Again, the reason is because this is a tri-band router, that's why the speed difference is bigger. They both have Zigbee Smart Home Hump built in, which some smart home devices require that. Not all of them do. All my devices don't require a hub, but again, some do. Uh, but this uh, acts as a Zigbee Smart Home Hub if you need it. And this one has a slightly faster processor and double the RAM compared to this. Okay, so in my speed tests, because I did a whole bunch of speed tests and very many different configuration options, because this is a mesh router, that's why I test many different options to help uh, make decisions easier and stuff. But basically there's four options that I test, uh, four ways you can hook these up. And I basically did the same exact test for both routers and both configurations, um, doing the test in exactly the same spot with exactly the same device and all that stuff so try to make it as consistent as possible now starting off I use the iPhone 12 Pro which is a wireless AX device or Wi-Fi 6 I also use my Pixel 5 and the iPad Pro 3rd gen which are wireless AC devices but those I'm not going to talk about in this video I'm just going to talk about the Wi-Fi AX if you guys want to know more about that again uh, look in the description below for individual reviews that I did so I'm trying to keep this review as concise as possible, but just as a general rule of thumb, with wireless AX devices, you're going to get faster speeds. The difference between wireless AX and wireless AC, wireless AC is the older standard, but basically when you're really close to the router and you're doing speed tests, you're pretty much going to get the same speeds with either device. When you get farther away, um, the farther away you go, the more the wireless AX starts to you start seeing a much bigger difference between wireless AX and wireless AC. That's pretty much the gist of it. So all the speeds that I'm going to give you guys are with the fastest possible device, which is the wireless AX device. Okay, so my internet is 400 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload. And all the speeds that I'm going to say are in megabits per second, not to be confused by megabytes per second. Option one is you basically grab a router and you hook it up to your modem. Um, e any one of these Ethernet ports. The other one you could hook up to a switch or to a computer, whatever you want to do. But essentially, I take my iPhone 12 Pro and I basically come near this thing and I do a speed test and I got 482 down and 22 up. So a little bit faster than what my ISP rates. So I did the same exact test with the Eero Pro 6 and I pretty much got the exactly the same speed. So 480 down and 25 up, which is pretty much what I was expecting. 
Okay, option number two is when you take a router, an Euro 6 router, and you get an extender. And this is a dedicated extender, so you can't hook up any Ethernet ports to this. So the only way you can hook up to this main one is wirelessly connect to this. So you just hook this up to some other room, hook up the power, and boom, connects, expands your Wi-Fi network. So I, for all of these options that I'm saying, when I'm close to the main one, which is hooked up through Ethernet to your modem, I get that basically that 480 down and 2025 up. So all my numbers that I'm going to say are when I'm hooked up to the secondary router, which is acting as an access point or this access point, essentially. So when I get close to this and I did speed test with this, when the Eero 6 was my main router, I got 190 down and 21 up. When I got the Eero Pro 6 as the main router and I was using the same exact Eero 6 extender, and I got really close to this, I got 217 down and 21 up. So now you're starting to see a difference. It's basically 27 megs per second uh, faster uh, compared to the Euro 6 when this is the main router. Again, because this is producing a stronger Wi-Fi signal compared to the Euro 6. So this is able to, it's basically like it's closer to this and it's getting a stronger signal. Option number three, is when you get two of the same routers, the Eero 6 routers, and you hook up one to the modem, and then from this other port, you go to this port through Ethernet. You can go through a switch, doesn't have to go through a switch between these two routers, but basically, this secondary router, router acting as an access point is hooked up to this through Ethernet. So, this is the best possible option, it's gonna give you the best possible speeds, when I got really close to this and did a speed test with the iPhone, I got 481 down and 23 up. So as I was expecting, very good speeds. When I did the same option with the Eero Pro 6, I basically got very similar. So again, one sucked up to the modem, uh, the other one, Ethernet port is sucked up to this, either through a switch or not through a switch, but basically, that's called Ethernet backhaul, by the way. Um, but essentially, this is somehow connected to this via Ethernet cable. So when I did speed tests, I got to this, I basically got that same 480 down and 25 up, exactly what I was expecting. Option number four is when you take these two exact routers, but instead of having them connected via Ethernet, they're hooked up via Wi-Fi. So it's very similar to what option two is, except you're actually using a router as an access point versus an extender. So this one is hooked up to your modem and then this one, you just go anywhere in your place and then, you know, hook this up to the power and this wirelessly connects to this. So now there's a wireless connection between these two, very similar to the Wi-Fi extender. When I did a speed test, came really close to this, did a speed test, I got 192 down and 19 up. Now here's where the Eero Pro 6 starts to shine. Because in that same test with option number four, when I got really close to this, again, this is hooked up to the modem and these are wirelessly connected to each other. Um, and I got really close to this one, which is wirelessly connected to the main one. I got 332 down and 23 up. So much, much faster when these are wirelessly connected. So here's where the Eero Pro 6 is starting to shine. So even though you, they're wirelessly connected to each other, you're getting much faster speeds. Now, option number four, I got this question mostly with the Nest Wi-Fi, but I got it recently as well with the Eero. But basically a question I get is, okay, if these are wirelessly connected, can I use these ethernet ports on the secondary router and will I get internet access or network access, I should say, to the devices that are hooked up to this? And the answer is yes. So even though these are wirelessly connected and this, this one's hooked up to your modem, this is your gateway router, this one, you can still use the Ethernet ports. You can use both of these Ethernet ports to hook up to other devices and they will hook up to your network. Now I did speed tests on those as well and I basically got the same speed. So I got around 190 down and 19 up. So very similar to my speed test with the wireless, which is what I was expecting, which is basically you're gonna get the best possible, uh, you're gonna get the best possible wireless connection speeds if you hook it up via Ethernet. So 
which is what I was expecting. So because 192 down was my best possible Wi-Fi speed when I was really close to this, I basically got the same thing when I hooked it up via Ethernet to my Xbox Series X. I did a speed test and I pretty much got uh, very similar speeds to that, which is 192 down. Here's where the Eero Pro 6 surprised me. Option 4, hooked up to modem, wirelessly connected to each other. I hook up an Ethernet to my Xbox Series X from this one, which is acting as a point. I got 480 down and 23 up. That's insane. I was not expecting that. I was expecting 330 down, 360 down, something like that. I got 480 down, which is the fastest possible internet connection I can get, even though these were wirelessly connected. That's crazy. I was not expecting that from this, but I got it. So Hero Pro 6 is shining like crazy. Now, I did a range test. So all of these tests that I said, I was very close to the secondary um, router or secondary point as I said now I did a range test where I did option 3 where I have two of the same exact uh, routers hooked up to each other via Ethernet giving you the best possible speeds so I walked 60 feet away or 18.3 meters away and I did a speed and basically right before that I did a speed test I was getting like 5 megs down very very slow like Wi-Fi was pretty much almost done and I walk a little bit farther away, around 60 feet or so again, and I basically lost my connection. So I can't connect, I'm too far away. I went outside, closed the door, there's some other interference there, some other walls and stuff. Lost connection. I went that same exact distance with the same exact device when I had the Eero Pro 6 routers hooked up to each other via Ethernet and I got 180 down and 20 up. So where the Eero 6 stopped working, I lost the signal. The Eero Pro 6 with the iPhone 12 Pro, I got 180 down and 20 up. That's nuts. That's pretty crazy because you're really starting to see like where this thing is shining because when you're going farther away, this thing still has a very strong connection. Since my internet is not gigabit, I did some local file transfers to see if I could get closer to those speeds. I did this with my Synology DS220 Plus network attached storage to my iPhone 12 Pro. Now if I used a newer laptop, it probably would have been faster, but just to, as a reference between these two. So when I transferred a large file from the Synology to my phone, I basically got an average speed of around 480 megabits per second transfer speeds. With the Eero 6, the same exact thing was around 400 megabits per second. So it was a little bit faster when I had the Eero Pro 6 hooked up. So the question becomes, which one is worth getting? Well, if you have a lot of Ethernet connections, because these have the same exact Ethernet connection performance, if you're not going too far away, if you're doing Ethernet backhaul, so if you're doing option number three, where your secondary router is acting as a point, is hooked up via Ethernet, then you know this is probably the better option because this is also much cheaper. Individually, it sells for 129 bucks in the U.S., where this one retails for 229 bucks in the U.S. So, not half the price, but close to half the price. But if wireless is a big deal for you, if you have a lot of wireless devices, if you're going far away, if you gonna, if you're not gonna hook up via option three, so if if both of the routers are not going to be hooked up via Ethernet, so if you're going with option number four, for instance, this is going to give you better speeds, especially with option number four. If you're hooking them up, you know, with the secondary router acting as an access point, if you're going to hook up other devices and stuff via Ethernet, then this is going to give you much better performance. So it really comes down to is wireless a big deal for you? If it's a big deal, the Eero Pro 6 is definitely going to give you better performance. Uh, between the two, I personally like the Eero Pro 6. I'm going to stick with the Eero Pro 6. Between the two, I would pick this. I think it's worth the extra price. But again, it, it really depends you know, what you're using it for. Because I use 
like a decent amount of wireless devices and sometimes I do go far away and I and I like this so so yeah but as always if you guys enjoyed this video please like and subscribe I have a whole bunch of other router videos coming up I'm going to show you guys how to connect all the connections how I you know how I talked about all the different options I'm actually going to show you guys how to do that I just got the Netgear Orbi so I'm going to do an unboxing I'm going to do a speed test with that I'm also going to compare the Orbi with the Eero Pro 6 I'm going to compare the Eero 6 with the Nest Wi-Fi, which I've already done all of that. I just need to make a video on it. But essentially, I have a whole bunch of stuff coming up. So be sure to hit that subscribe button below. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment sections below. And thank you to all my current subscribers.